Amen. Thank you for joining me today. Great to be here. Today we're looking at the wonderful topic of heavenly rest out of the very short Psalm, Psalm 4. I'm just going to read all eight verses, and that way you can check it off your Bible reading list, Psalm number 4, just right off the top and get that out the way. Uh, And we can look at this beautiful topic of getting heavenly rest. We all need rest in these last days. I know that. Uh, Verse 1 of Psalm 4, Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity and seek after leasing? Selah. But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Selah. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There be many that say, Who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart, more than in the time that the corn and their wine increased. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. Amen. Psalm 4, eight verses. So many good verses in there. Amen. And, it, and, and about halfway through in verse 5, uh, the psalm reads, Offer us the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. And I really believe that heavenly rest starts with trusting God. And at, at odds here or what's going on uh, in our lives is often our flesh having a desire to wrangle control from God himself over our lives. And we as born again Christians, we surrender to the Lord. We get saved. We get uh, we get set on fire for God. And guess what? We surrender our lives. We give control. We cede control to Jesus Christ. And when it comes to resting, oftentimes our problem is, or lays, if you will, if you don't mind the pun, our problem lays in the idea that we don't want to give it to God, that we don't want to rest in God. And yet sleep is something that's so important. You know, if you don't sleep, eventually you'll die. That's a study they've done. (laughs) They figured that out, that eventually over a progression of time, weeks or a month, you will die if you don't sleep. If you don't sleep for a day or two, how do you feel? You know, I remember thinking it was cool when I was in high school if you could pull an all-nighter. But I I don't think it's cool now. Amen. (laughs) I mean, after... I remember having kids and what was interesting about having kids, young kids, little babies is they keep you up all night, not just one night, but they keep you up all night in a progression of nights. And it really, as that goes on and on, it wears on you as a parent and you realize there's this cumulative effect of not sleeping a lot. And if you've ever been sick, maybe you've been kept up for a long period of time, or if you've ever had a lot of work or studying or a busy season, or you work a night shift and you can't quite fall asleep during the day, you realize how precious sleep is, how difficult sometimes it is to be able to fall asleep. And then you have a Psalm like this and Psalm four, verse eight, the last verse in the Psalm, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep for thou Lord only makest me dwell in safety. And so we see here that, you know what? God wants us to sleep well. He wants us to trust in him, to have our minds set upon him. And that's what David's saying here is he's going to lay down in peace and he's going to sleep in peace because God alone is going to make him to dwell in safety. And I absolutely love this verse. I've been, if you can't hear it in my voice, been dealing with sickness for the last couple of weeks. And, uh, and, and, and it's been hard because my body's been exhausted and yet I've at times had trouble sleeping. Thank God, not lately, but at the beginning there of being sick, I had some trouble sleeping. And the Lord has been so good to me, giving me verses like this that I've, you know, read before, but oh, how great it is to think on it and meditate on it. And to the point where uh, I would just lay there and kind of repeat that over and over in my prayers. And that would help me to fall asleep. Why? Because I was taking away my desire to control things, and I'm giving it to a holy God who is in full control, right? And and uh, 
I thought about that on a, a certain day, whatever it was, Monday or Tuesday, a week ago. And the very next day, I saw a quote, I think it was from Elizabeth El- Elliot, that said something very similar to the extent of anxiety is when we keep things in our hands and peace is when we give them to God, something like that. And I'm paraphrasing, but it's the same concept. And so if you want to have heavenly rest, the first step in having heavenly rest is giving your life to Christ and being saved. And once you're saved, once you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, amen, once you've done that, you're believing he's real. Like This isn't just like, I'm doing this because grandpa did it or grandma did it or what. I'm doing this because I believe God is real and he, uh, he uh, God is a he and he is a spirit and he's real and he desires for me to submit or surrender or be obedient to him and allow him to work in my life. And David says he's going to lay down in peace. I love that. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. So let's start with laying down. You know, to lay down is is the idea that God's in control and that should satisfy any desire we have to do something else. What keeps you up at night? Not like if you're laying down, what are you thinking about? But what keeps you from laying down? What keeps you up? Maybe you think you have to get all the laundry done for the week or all the food prep or you have to finish a book or you have to watch the whole game or you have to work for XYZ hours or whatever it is that's keeping you up at night. Amen. If it's not, you know, something that's required, uh, like you're driving, you know, you don't want to sleep when you're drive, driving, but if it's not something required, why not lay down? You know, why, why not think about that? Like, why can't we go to bed at a reasonable time for those that struggle with going to bed at a reasonable time and always hate themselves next morning when they're getting up? What's keeping them up at night? Maybe you have some kind of, you know, person you have to talk to or some kind of thing, ritual that you've done. Like, think about that and think about, is this what the Lord would have me to do? And then just say, you know what? I'm going to give, I'm going to give it to God. I'm going to lay down at night. I, I'm going to realize that the Lord is the provider of my rest. And this all starts with the idea of laying down our heads in peace at night, realizing, hey, God's given you a place to lay down. And at a certain time, it's time to go ahead and lay down. And the world we live in, it sounds very odd because TV programs can run very late at night, award shows, games, like I said, entertainment uh, stores stay open late. Some restaurants stay open 24 hours. Uh, people might be on social media late or whatever, doing whatever else late at night, just because they're all doing it doesn't mean anything. God wants you to lay down and not only just lay down, but rejoice in a God that's in the details. You know, you see here, this is very specific. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. So it starts with that identification that God wants you to rest. And that idea that, you know what, whatever else you have a desire to do, you should let God's sovereignty lead you to resting, laying down, not continuing on past a reasonable time. And think about the idea that God's given us a place to lay down. Luke 9, 58, and Jesus said unto him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man hath not where to lay his head. That, by the way, is Jesus' response to a man that said he was going to follow him wherever he went. And if you get into Luke 9 at the end there, people are wanting to uh, get get with Jesus and do things for Jesus, but they had to go do this errand first and do that thing first. And, and, and you know, the Lord's saying, look, commit to me, stop making excuses. And we have this irony where God's given us a place to lay our, lay our head, even though his only begotten Jesus didn't quite have a home, right? It's incredible how good God has been to us. And even if we spend our waking moments in battle, right? In, in a life that seems like there's one battle after the next. That's what life has seemed like uh, lately. There's just been a lot of battles, a lot of, you know, uh, dominoes falling, so to speak. Well, you know what? That time where we are to rest, we need to take advantage of it. The Lord's given it to us. And if you have a place to lay your head, you are very blessed and don't take it for granted. And by the way, when you're doing that, you're thinking on the Lord and you're making him a priority. So not just laying down at night in peace, but sleeping at night in peace. The idea of his power being sufficient for you. You know, what puts you to sleep? You know, some people have to take medicine to go to sleep. Some people have to uh, have blackout blinds. 
A relative of mine needed blackout blinds to go to sleep. Some people need music. Uh, some people need um, a nightlight. Some people need, you know, some people will drink before they go to sleep or whatever it is or have to take a long, hot shower. Look, not, you know, whatever people are doing to go to sleep, th- that is a routine maybe. But for us here as born again believers, we need to start with the idea that God is the one that provides sleep. I've heard preachers mention that before, that literally when you sleep, God put you to sleep. You didn't put you to sleep. God put you to sleep. And guess what? It's by his provision that he would wake you up. Amen. It's his sufficiency that we are woken up. I mean, think about what is sleep. Is it not complete uh, powerlessness, right? Vulnerability. We are completely vulnerable when we are asleep. We, I mean, I don't know if, if, I guess we really realize how vulnerable we are, but when we're asleep, there's, you know, uh, when I'm asleep, my wife was telling me my daughter got up at this time and this time and this time, and I was completely out. So if I don't even, if I couldn't even hear my daughter up throughout the night, you know, I'm completely vulnerable to whatever. Amen. Uh, and, and it's God's mercy and grace and his sufficiency that allows us to sleep and then allows us to wake in the morning. That's all God, amen. And we should have a contentment in having a place to rest, our head, contentment in having the God of all the universe put us to sleep and wake us up. That should inform your attitude. When you're going to bed, if you know God's in control, you're probably likely to be praying to God because you're like, hey, he's the one putting me to sleep. I need to at least pray to him. And then when you get up, what happens? Well, you thank him for another day. That's what I try to do. And I try to be very logical about it. I say, Lord, thank you for another day. And in my mind, I'm thinking it was God that granted this day. And if God granted this day, I can't walk around like a crab apple all day because God granted this day. And whatever is going to come my way, the Bible says the evil of the day is sufficient thereof. Whatever is going to come my way, let it be because God has granted it. See, God is fully sovereign. Sometimes I think we give the devil too much credit. God is fully sovereign, amen? He is in full control. Everything that happens, happens with his acknowledgement, with his knowledge, amen? Nothing takes God by surprise. So he has given us another day. He's given us the abilities to get through the day. He's given us the resources, and that should be good enough. You know, you look at Genesis 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So here we are as dust, as dirt of the ground. And what and what happens? God breathes into man. God gives man breath. God gives man life. And I believe that just like in Genesis 2, 7, that God is still doing that, still giving us breath, still giving us a heartbeat. You know, people talk about when's God going to take, you know, take this person or when God's going to do this. How about instead of thinking about when God would take someone, how about is God going to give me another day? See, it's not like he's only in control when he's going to take your life. He has given you life. And here we have David saying he's going to lay down in peace and he's going to sleep in peace. And these two, the idea of laying down and sleeping, the idea of trusting in God's uh, sufficiency, trusting in his control, trusting in his provision. And the whole crux of this is based upon the latter part of Psalm 4.8, thou Lord only. So we see Psalm 4.8, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep for thou Lord only makest me dwell in safety. So we see this uniqueness of his power to protect. It's God only that allows us to be safe. It's God only that does the magical, amazing work of allowing us to sleep. It's God only that allows us to wake up. It's God only that gives us a a job to do, a a talent to do it. I was talking to a brother in Christ uh, yesterday about uh, an individual that was very talented and didn't really enjoy what uh, he was talented. He was talented in a certain uh, sport, and he didn't really care for it too much. And I just laughed because that is actually a picture often of how we all are, sometimes the things that we're best at, right? We don't even appreciate what God's given us, amen? Um, 
And I know that for a fact, because a lot of things that came easy to me when I was in school and stuff, I wasn't pursuing that for a career or anything. I was just, oh, that's easy. Oh, that's, that's, I can do that. Like, no problem. Let me go after this thing. That's really hard that I don't know how to do, you know? And it's crazy. It's like, if God didn't give me that skill, why am I going down that path? But oftentimes we're all like that, like this individual that was real gifted in a certain sport. And he just didn't really care that much about it. That's life. Amen. People, oftentimes we are taken for granted that God himself provides us with, with, with talents and skills that we can go and earn a living with, or, you know, get through school with, or whatever it may be, help others with, serve the Lord with. How about that? And it's all by his grace and his mercy. You know, David says here, for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. There is no other that makes us dwell in safety. This is an exclusive statement. God only has the power to protect. We can think that we're big and strong. We can go to the gym every day and get buff. We can have go get firearms and knives and pickaxes and whatever else and think we're armed to the teeth. It means nothing. We are vulnerable in the sight of God. Read the Old Testament. Read about how God's people will be repentant and he'll forgive them. And they'll have an enemy coming towards them. And God will say, don't worry. You know, yeah, they have 400,000 chariots and you guys have about 500. Don't, don't worry. How about you just stay right there and I'll, and I'll take care of all of them. And you just stand still. You know, that's God's power. And when you read that in the Bible, what God is communicating to us is he is the one that has the power to protect. Amen. And that same protection, that same God, by the way, that was there in the Old Testament is there in the New Testament. And that same God is the God that you receive when you uh, accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You see, receive the Holy Spirit living within your heart. And that same God is the one that David's speaking of here that will, by his power alone, keep you as you lay down and you sleep. And you can get very specific with this verse if you want to. And you start thinking about the threats that would face someone like David in the kingdom. His own ki- children wanted to kill him to become king. When you're, you know, in the kingdom times, if you want to get become a king, you have to wipe out the old king and his whole family. So he was under constant threat, both internally and externally from people that want to take over the promised land, Canaan land, the land of David. Amen. They want to get it. He said, God, I have to rely on you because that's too big for me to think about. That's too big for me to handle. And so we need to have the same attitude, that attitude of gratitude that, hey, God, you are sufficient. Now here, I'm going to flip it on the script a little bit. What are we putting our faith into? Are we putting to, to, you know, okay, God, you're good, but I need to, I need to be on my phone for a couple hours. You know, I need to have my show playing. You know, I need to have, uh, the security alarm and the lock and all these things. I need to have all this extra stuff to be able to sleep. You know, think about what that communicates to God. Now, I'm not saying people don't need help. Amen. I'm very sympathetic to that. You you may have things that God's given you. You know, he may have given you, uh, uh, you know, I've got a salt lamp in my room that my wife got me. My daughter thinks she knows where she got it. I don't remember where she got it. But Himalayan salt lamp, I've got bad allergies, and it kind of serves as a little bit of light in there. So I don't think the Lord minds with that thing on. But if I'm thinking that I need that to sleep, and I don't need God, that's the problem. Because the truth is, whether that light's in there or not, the light, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, is living within me. And he is the one that will allow me to sleep. And he is the one that will wake me up. Amen. He is the one that is the sufficient protector. Amen. And think about this for a minute. Who, you know, think of God as the engineer. He designed himself to put us to sleep and to protect us throughout. You think about that. You know, God designed himself and us to be powered by him, right? Because we cannot do it on our own. You know, th- does anyone tell themselves to give themselves, uh, okay, give myself o- oxygen and all right, brain rest over here. Okay, muscle recover over here. Okay, this, this, and this. We don't tell our bodies to do that. We don't, we don't pump in our own blood. Amen. God does that. He's the engineer designed by God for God. That's who we are. 
Ephesians 6.10, good New Testament reference to God's power. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. See, we look at God helping us through the night. We look at God giving us rest. It's a picture or a part of the idea that God is our strength. He is our power. We are strong in his might. The Bible says when we are weak, he is made strong. Amen. He shows his power through us in our weakest times. And I can't think of a weaker time than sleeping. And as you go about your days here on earth, remember to take time to sleep and remember that it's by God that we are to sleep and we are to reflect on God. And if you have trouble sleeping, read this verse over and over again, Psalm 4, 8, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep for thou Lord only makest me dwell in safety. Be satisfied in Christ, lay in peace, be awed by his sufficiency to see us through the night and put all your confidence in God for your daily protection and provision. It is of him alone. Thank you for listening. Take care, sleep well, God bless, and amen.